So last time we had um, a number of demos of people sitting on the stool, spinning around, and we learned that in the absence of external influences, if they were rotating, they would stay rotating. And the quantity that described their unwillingness to change, their state of rotation, is called, goes by a couple of different names, moment of inertia or rotational inertia. Okay, and we saw that it had the expression I is equal to the sum over the masses, m sub i, r sub i squared, where r sub i was the distance from the spin axis to the mass point in question. And I thought I would uh, just illustrate uh, what must be going on in the collapse uh, of a star and a supernova explosion to form a neutron star. Now, a neutron star uh, is made in some supernova explosions when the star starts to collapse. It's, it's exhausted its fuel, so it can no longer support the pressure of gravity, and it starts to collapse. And then the electrons in the star st start to get cranky, uncomfortable, they're squeezed in too tight a state, so they resist. And the electron, what's called degeneracy pressure, holds the star from collapse. But if the mass is too great, that won't work. And it continues to collapse and produce from a, an initial star of radius, something like 10 to the 5 kilometers, a a little ball, and there's an example picture of a little uh, neutron star and the cloud of junk that was emitted as it was collapsing. Uh, and instead of having a radius of 10 to the 5 kilometers, it now has a radius of 10 kilometers. Roughly the same mass. Of course, some of the mass has disappeared. So you have now, some people call it a giant nucleus. Okay, this is matter. So what would have happened to the density? Yeah, I, I love the quantitative nature of the answers. Yeah, a lot. It went up a lot. Went up by an order of five. Try again, Ian. Four. Try again, Ian. Or 10, or 20, something like that. <laughs> okay. Went up by a magnitude of 42. So the radius dropped by a factor of 10 to the 4. So the density, if the mass didn't change, the density went up by a factor of 10 to the 12. Okay, so a teaspoon has a whole lot of mass in it. Okay, so the star, all stars tend to rotate. So if the star is rotating, let's say with a period of 30 days, and it's, a star doesn't really rotate like a rigid body, Different regions rotate at different rates, but we're just trying to get a sense for the order of magnitude of the rate at which the star is going to rotate. So if our sun rotates with a period of about 27 days, give or take, so 30 days seems reasonable. And if it collapses down that much, but its angular momentum is preserved, how fast would it be rotating? That is, what would be the period? And I'll give you a little hint. <coughs> that would be megaseconds, not a unit usually used, but yeah. About a centisecond? About a centisecond. So 0.01 seconds, how did you get that? So 
So we take this and drop it by eight orders of magnitude. This is 2.5 times 10 to the six and divide that by 10 to the eight. Why 10 to the eight? Because the radius is dropping by 10 to the four, but the moment of inertia is proportional to the radius squared if the mass doesn't change and if we just pretend, roughly speaking, that it has the same mass, dis you know, geometric distribution, then we're left with 25 milliseconds. So this neutron star rotates 40 times a second. It would be uncomfortable, let us say, <laughs> to be on the surface. You might get dizzy. It would also be a little warm, okay? <laughs> they, 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 they tend to be really hot, and that's why the light that is emitted looks white, because it's approximately all the visible wavelengths uh, have the same uh, emission rate. Okay, so, uh, there's an example from last time of conservation of angular momentum. But